Welcome to Tea Time with Sue. In this episode, University President Sue Thomas sits down with student Megan Nesbitt. Megan is a communication major who has gained practical experience in her field by running social media accounts for the Student Recreation Center and the Office of Admission. In this episode, Sue and Megan discuss being brothers in a service fraternity. Let's jump into the conversation. So welcome to this episode of Tea Time with Sue. And so I'm just going to say I'm thrilled to welcome my brother. (laughs) Thank you. So... Megan, explain to everybody why I am welcoming you as my brother and a little bit about who you are. Of course. So Dr. Sue Thomas is my brother because I am an Alpha Phi Omega and Dr. Thomas was an Alpha Phi Omega when she was in her undergrad. So since we're in the same um, service fraternity, we are brothers. We are. (laughs) And my name is Megan. I'm a fifth year here on campus. I'm a comm major and I'm very involved in APO. (laughs) So... So explain to everybody kind of a little bit what APO does and why it's important. So we are a service fraternity on campus, but we are non-gendered. We let everybody in, even though the word fraternity has some connotations to it. Sure. Um, But we just do a ton of service around the community, around the nation, around the state, um, around campus. Um, We really get involved and we also do some other things. We do leadership and friendship are like our core values. Cool. Yeah. So it's been really fun for me to be able to go to some of your events Mm -hmm. and your initiation. And I've told everybody, my daughter is also my brother. Mm -hmm. So I love these really cool familial ties through APO. It is nice. It's a good recruitment tactic to be like, well, the president of our university is our brother. So you should join because you could be the president of the university. And that actually helps? I think so. I I think so. Lovely. Good. I'm thrilled. (laughs) So you're really involved on campus and in service in a lot of other ways, too. Can you share a little bit about that and why that's important to you? Yeah, I do a lot of the social media on Truman State's campus. So I run the Rec Instagram. I help run the Becoming a Bulldog Instagram for Office of Admissions. And then I'm also on the social media team that runs the Truman State TikTok. Okay, so tell me a little bit about all those because, you know, Richie and Travis will tell you that I don't know much about social media. They, they talk to me about what I should do, and I go, oh, okay. Or students ask me to do things all the time, and I'm thrilled to do that. But I just don't know and do a whole lot with social media myself. It is really fun. I know I'm one of the kids that has forced you to be in a few TikToks, <laughs> a few videos. Um, I really enjoy it. It's, you get to interact with so many students, and I'm sure people are annoyed with me and some of my coworkers running up and being like, will you please be in this video for the union or Truman State? But it's really fun. I get to see different parts of the student body, and I get to learn from people that I would have never spoken to before. So do you have a favorite one you've done? or a favorite couple of social media posts that you've done? Something that we do over at the Union, and I run it uh, with Nora, we do Talk to Us Tuesday. I'm behind the camera, so you don't really see me, but she runs up and we ask students tons of questions. Um, and we had a really fun one where, what were you for Halloween? And we got some really crazy costumes that I was not expecting. An example? Uh, we had as somebody as dress up as you. As me? <laughs> yes, there was somebody who was Dr. Thomas for Halloween. Oh. Okay, so we're going to have to track down a picture of this one. (laughs) They'll probably look better than me, so I can get some hits. It was pretty iconic. It was good. It was good? You saw it? Yes. I saw pictures. It was very good. Okay, so you'll have to tell me who it is so I can go get some hits. I'll show you after this. Yeah, cool. (laughs) So why do you like doing the social media stuff? I just really kind of found that I have a knack for it. I really, I'm on my phone all the time anyway, so why not use that to make money and also (laughs) learn something new that I can like pursue a career in later. I really enjoyed it. And I actually used to have a different major here. One of the people who's changed their major multiple times. It's okay. And then when I changed to a communication major, I found out that I could make a career out of social media and graphic design and all this. So kind of got into it that way and really like it. So you found your passion. Definitely found my passion here that I never would have thought I would have gotten into. I'd love to hear that. (laughs) I'd love to hear that. So so tell me, so it's REC and it's you and I and it's becoming a bulldog. What are the similarities that you might do across those and what are some real differences? I would say the REC is very different. Um, We mainly post workout ideas and what we've got going on over there and intramurals, but it's still, we have a concept where like, we show students and our like members that work at the rec. So that's really fun, Mm -hmm. but it's really similar between becoming a bulldog and you and I, because we want to show off our students as much as possible. So that's something I really strive to do that you kind of see overlap a little bit. Sure. Sure. So becoming a bulldog, 
Why would you tell people to become a bulldog? I would say why not become a bulldog? This is right. one of the best universities. I mean, who hasn't heard that we are ranked number one in the Midwest 25 years in a row? Um, it's a beautiful campus. We have great opportunities here. I mean, I'm sitting with the president of the university. I would, there's so many more. <laughs> so in addition to all of that, I also understand, so I have a huge sweet tooth. I mean, like really big sweet tooth. And you have a famous cookie recipe. Do tell. I do. I have a very big sweet tooth as well. And I like to make my friends also have a sweet tooth by baking for them. Uh, so I make a very famous pumpkin cake cookie. And Ooh. I will make it year round. I don't care if it's fall or not. It's very good. It's like pumpkin and flour, sugar, all the rest of that. But there's some secret spices that I put in there, top them with powdered sugar. So are they soft or are they crunchy? They're very soft. They're very it's soft. like a cake almost. It's like foamy inside. Ooh. Very fluffy. Okay, so how do you get to be your friend to get those cookies? <laughs> like, I will bring them. To, I will bring them to anybody. <laughs> if anybody <laughs> asks me, I'm like, yeah, I'll whip up a batch. That's fine. So maybe that's your side hustle, right? You do the social media stuff and your side hustle is the cookies. I have made them for quite a few professors. <laughs> Whether or not it's for bonus points, I don't know. But I've done it before. <laughs> we won't ask. We won't ask whether it was or not. <laughs> so your talents actually don't stop there either, right? I understand you are a dancer who went off to really cool competitions. Yes, I, um, from kindergarten to senior year of high school, I was a competitive hip hop dancer in St. Louis. And actually one other person that was on my team is a freshman at Truman now. So shout out to SJ. But we Yay. were able to go to Worlds together and compete at, it's in Disney World actually, in the ESPN World of Sports. Ooh, so talk about that. So first, tell me why hip hop, right? And then what's that experience going and competing like that? Uh, why hip hop? Hip hop is really big in St. Louis. It's just has a really big like following. And I found this um, like organization, I guess it is. And their coach was really fun. And we really hit it off. And he was like, I want you on my team. So I auditioned for it and made it. So that's kind of why I got into hip hop. And I also just really like the dance style. It's, it's very different from classical and mm -hmm. lyrical. So is it all genders? Yes, on we the team? our team was a co-ed team, but we also had like um, a girls team and a boys team. How many? I think at the highest we had like 28 people on the team, but wow. it kind of varied from year to year. Like we could have 20 to 30, but the bigger teams always look really cool on stage. So how did you get into the competition? You'd have to audition? How, how did well, all that work? So competitions, you kind of just sign up to go and you have to pay a little bit of money but you mm -hmm. sign up to go and you go and compete and based on what place you get you might get an invitation to the dance worlds which is like the big competition where you'll see teams from all over the world and then we ended up getting a bid every single year that I was on the team so then I was able to go to worlds so countries what kind of what countries were there were, and was hip hop similar across all the countries? Yes, it was very it? similar. And you could see like similar moves too. So it was kind of cool that even though like there was teams from China that would do the same moves as us and it was very interesting, but there was teams from India, China, Thailand. I made friends with some girls from France. I mean, all over. So did you have a favorite? Well, I know your team once came in fourth, correct? Yes. Was that the favorite dance that you did or did you have another one? I think that was my favorite one, and that was when I was a sophomore in high school, so it was 2016. That was definitely one of my favorites. It was, like, musical conductor-themed, so oh, we had that. one of our people up at the top of the stage when the dance started with a, like, wand, like he was oh, conducting mm -hmm. us, and we were actually on our heads in a headstand, um, and we were moving our legs in accordance with how he moved his um, wand. Whoa. And then it kind of progressed from there. So you have amazing balance. I used to. I don't think I could to. do it now. <laughs> I don't think I could do it now, but I've seen the showgirls doing stuff like okay. that, so it's very fun to watch. So do you dance at all here? Or? I do not. I figured I wanted to come in and focus on academics because okay. I tend to put a lot of my life into dance in high school, oh. but I still do dance like with my friends and for fun for on the fun. weekends. Oh, very cool. So your fifth year yes. right, is graduation coming up soon. It is. It is. I'm very excited. Sad to leave Truman, though. So what happens next? Do you know? I think that I'm going to look at jobs in social media, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think that I've been provided with really good opportunities here at Truman, and I have such good experience and working on the Becoming a Bulldog account and the REC account for a year and a year and a half now. 
So I definitely think that's what I want to go into. So is that going back home to St. Louis? Is that going someplace else to find those jobs? I think I'm going to go home for a little bit, yeah. just a little bit, and then I would love to explore a little bit. Maybe Nashville, Tennessee, maybe Wisconsin, I'm not sure. Okay, so tell me why Nashville and Wisconsin. Those are two very different kind of places. <laughs> very different. Nashville, I have three friends who are Truman grads that live there, so I'd Ooh. love to end up with them, and then I just love Wisconsin. It's very pretty. <laughs> So what are they doing in Nashville? They are doing all different things. Believe it or not, they were all comm majors, so they very inspired me. Um, one of them works in marketing. One of them works in nonprofits. And uh, another one who actually worked at admissions here works at Vanderbilt. Oh, cool. And in, in admissions at Vanderbilt? He's trying to get into admissions, but he works in the student success office right now. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so he definitely took his Truman skills to end up there. Well, you know, we're going to open a success center in about a year and a half here. You can always think about coming home. He might have to come back. <laughs> he might have to come home. So when you graduate, what are you going to miss the most about Truman? I think I'm going to miss everything. I'm going to miss okay. walking across campus, going to events. I think I'm really going to miss seeing the fountain lit up. I think that is my favorite thing to see, and it always ends in the winter, and I'm going to really miss it. Well, we... We may be able to, not the fountain itself, but I think we might be able to do some lights with the fountain. That would be future. great to see. And so so we've been told the fountain's becoming kind of an iconic part of Truman. I what you're talking so. about, it sounds like that might be. The I think so. I know me and my friends called the SKGRSP, and we've like said that in front of people, and they're like, what? I'm like, the Sandra K. Reeves, she's the Sesquicentennial Plaza. <laughs> what, you don't know what the SKGRSP <laughs> stands for? I think it is very iconic, yeah. and I think you running through it with the freshmen uh, during Truman Week helps solidify that for them. So have you run through it and danced in it? I have. I did it for a TikTok. Yeah. I've done it for a few TikToks. So was it cold when you did it? It was, but it was very refreshing because I had been refreshing. running around with Spike before, so it was a good cool off. Good. And poor Spike's not allowed to go through. No, he was very sad. No, he was very sad. He's not a big fan of the water. But he got to help film. So oh, he good. liked that. Good, 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 good. <laughs> okay, so part of what we do in Tea Time with Sue is, if you saw the first season, I would always pull things out of the teapot, right? Yes. But the fun part of this season is I don't have to pull anything out of the teapot this time. You get to pull something out excited. of the teapot. So reach on in there and grab a good one. Oh, I got two. Oh, no, it's one. It's long. Okay. <laughs> How do you like to spend your free time? I enjoy spending my free time doing service with Alpha Phi Omega also thinking of new ideas to post on social mm -hmm. media, but I also have two cats who I really like to spend my time with. So what are their names? Rosie and Remy. Rosie and Remy. Yes, and they do also have an Instagram. It's another Instagram they that do. I run. Yes. And what do they talk about on their Instagram, or what do they show? Uh, they mainly post about how much they love me. Oh, um, <laughs> very lovely of but them. But they also show off their toys and how much they love to run around and keep me up at night. So do they have special toys, or they're just really proud of the toys they have? They get a subscription box every month. They they're very spoiled. They get a subscription box every month, so they I have new toys. There was a subscription box for cat toys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did <laughs> okay. have to do some searching, but yeah. <laughs> wow, they are very spoiled cats. Yeah, and they're going to miss Truman a lot because we've walked around on campus in their stroller. They're going to be very sad to leave. They have a stroller? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, we, we go up the little wheelchair ramp um, by the sub by parking the sub? lot. Yep, <laughs> we walk so around. So you really are a cat mom. I am. I'm very you proud of it, but mom. I won't ever have more than two. Just no going to keep it at two. <laughs> That's your limit? Yes. <laughs> okay, so as you leave, what advice do you have for anybody new who's considering coming to Truman, who's gotten to Truman and are trying to figure out who they are in our space? What would you say to them? I would say get involved. Go to the activities fair. Don't be scared to reach out to clubs and organizations. And don't be scared to talk to people. I've kind of gotten over my fear by running up to people and forcing them to be in videos. And it's made me like meet a lot of great people. So don't be scared to get involved. And so do they say yes, generally, when you run up to them? Or are they like, yeah, no, I don't have time for that? I think we're getting to a point where people want to be on it because we'll have requests of can I be on this week's episode? Oh, so, but cool. Of course, not everybody wants to be on camera, so we have some right. no's, but I think we're kind of making our way to popularity around campus. 
Okay, so you're going to keep remembering Truman when you go off and do all kind of cool things in social media, right? Absolutely. It's, it's where I started my career of social media. I'm very proud of it. I'm going to keep talking about it. All right. Don't forget the Bulldogs. Never. Oh, I'm so thrilled to have you with us, and I know you're going to have a spectacular future. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Tea Time with Sue. Subscribe to the podcast to stay in the know for when new episodes are released. Do you know students, faculty, and staff at Truman who make it such a unique and special place? Guests for Tea Time with Sue can be nominated at truman.edu slash tea time. Join us for the next episode when Sue sits down with Laura Bates, the Executive Director of Student Union and Campus Recreation.